So President McKinley calls up Spain and basically says that he needs them to do three things um, and satisfy the Cubans so that we don't have to try to get involved. So he wants them to fire the butcher, that general who was slaughtering everyone. He wants them to stop using concentration camps, and he wants them to grant Cuba limited autonomy. Autonomy is like independence and control. He wants the Cubans to get a little bit of control back. So Spain agrees, but no one is happy. Um, no one is happy about the Americans anyway. The Spanish want to total control of the, over Cuba, nothing less. The Cubans want total independence from the Spanish, nothing less. So it doesn't really solve the problem totally. Now, as the sort of days go on, riots start to break out in Havana, the capital of Cuba, between the Spanish and the Cubans because, as I've said, our involvement didn't really solve the problem there. There's still major tensions between the Cubans and the Spanish. And there are some Americans living in Cuba at this point, and we want to make sure that we can pr protect the U.S. citizens in Cuba and their property. So we send the USS Maine to Havana Harbor just to sit and hang out in case anything goes down. That way, if anything crazy happens, uh, we can get the American citizens in Havana onto the ship and leave. So it's sort of like a getaway car, like a backup plan. So on February 9th of 1898, the New York Journal gets their hands on a stolen letter from a, a Spanish foreign minister to Washington. I can't remember exactly, but I think he might have been writing to like the Spanish ambassador or something. And in this letter, it's called the Delome letter. If you see that on your vocab, that's this letter. Um, in this letter, he's basically talking trash about President McKinley, saying how they're not serious about resolving the Cuban conflict through negotiation or reform, and that they just plan on doing everything they were doing before, and how McKinley's such a fool, blah, 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 blah. People read this. Obviously, you know, the New York Journal gets this. Hearst is going to want to publish it, so he does. And people flip out, and they're just absolutely livid that the Spanish have, like, lied to us, deceived us, and are talking crap about our president. This is very uncool. Remember, we're feeling all that jingoism right now. So six days after that letter is published in the paper and people are so mad at Spain, the USS Maine explodes in Havana, killing 20 American sa sailors. Obviously, the logical con conclusion that people start drawing here is that clearly Spain blew up our ship somehow. Now, I want you to know, Spain did not blow up our ship. It was actually a, a mechanical malfunction of some kind in the engine, but we thought that they did, so people start calling for war. People start demanding that President McKinley go to war with Spain. So on March 8th, Congress authorizes $50 million to start mobilizing U.S. forces. Obviously, when we're mobilizing, especially at that cost, it's clear that we plan on going to war. So McKinley still wants to avoid a war, though, so he calls up Spain one last time and is like, I have four final demands and you have to meet them or else we're going to go to war. So he says that, number one, they've got to pay for the damages to the, to the USS Maine, the damages that were caused, remember, because we think they blew it up. Number two, they have to abandon the concentration camps once and for all. Number three, they have to stop fighting with the rebels in Cuba. And then number four, they have to allow Cuba total independence. Spain takes a few weeks to think about it. They tell us on April 9th that they will accept all of our demands except independence. They will not allow Cuba to be an independent country. They'll even pay for the ship that they didn't blow up, but they will not allow Cuba to be an independent country. So on April 11th, William McKinley asks Congress to go to war, it takes them a few days to pass the war measure, and then finally on the 14th, Congress approves it. So we are officially at war with Spain. Thus begins the Spanish-American War.